Cheers, everyone. Welcome to the University of Vinyl. My name is Tim. I am, of course, your host. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thanks for sticking with me, Vinyl community. I have no idea if today's video is going to cross those boundaries and maybe go into the bourbon community or not. Um, but if it does, just remember the vinyl community remains my first love and I'm not going anywhere. So I wanted to do kind of a cool crossover video today. As we enter into October, the temperatures are chilling down. The mornings are dark. I get up and have a couple cups of coffee every morning because my two Cocker Spaniels insist on waking up at around 5, 5.15, 5.30 at the latest, 5.30 Mountain Standard Time. And I will turn on my gas electric fireplace and think about the day ahead. But as we move into the autumn, my thoughts turn to my favorite spirit, which is bourbon. And I think bourbon, you know, there's an element of rye in bourbon. Uh, one of my favorite bourbons is a wheated bourbon, which we'll talk about a bit. But, uh, you know, it. I think it's better in cooler weather. And, you know, maybe you've had some bourbon in a flask at a Big Ten college football game. Maybe a Major League Baseball playoff game, or dare I say, the World Series. Can you bring a flask in these days to a sporting event? I'm not sure, and I'm not, I'm not condoning that or recommending that practice. But I will say that a cold weathered sporting event and a little American bourbon will go a long ways towards ensuring your success that day or evening. Now, I am definitely not a bourbon expert or a rock and roll <laughs> vinyl record expert or collector by any means. I am definitely an enthusiast and I have admitted in a recent video that yes, I am an audiophile, but I am also a, a bourbon aficionado. And uh, you know, bourbon here in the United States to it to be called or legally sold as bourbon the mash bill needs to consist of 51% corn. And then typically other cereal grains will make up the balance of the mash bill. Uh, most typically is going to be rye as the second ingredient, but also uh, wheat and barley and other assorted cereal grains. Now today I'm going to highlight three of my favorite bourbons they can represent different things to different people. Uh, they're, they're fantastic in any kind of a situation, whether that's just you and your loved one at home, maybe enjoying um, a movie, maybe listening to some fantastic music. I particularly think that bourbon goes well with electric blues. Now, I could be talking about Mississippi, Southern United States blues music, or we could be talking about electric British blues. In either event, bourbon is a fine accompaniment. Today's video is really going to be just an introduction to three bourbons that are widely available in the United States. I would be shocked um, if, uh, if you have a hard time finding these. Now, one of the, uh, one of the brands that I'm going to talk about um, has been a little more difficult to find lately over the last two or three years. And it's kind of built up a little bit of a reputation. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's becoming more and more sought after. So 
it is difficult to walk into your corner liquor store and see it on the shelves. Now, I don't think it's reached an allocated basis, but um, it is becoming more difficult to find. I used to find it frequently here in northern Colorado much easier four or five years ago. Now, another hot tip here. I actually have someone in my neighborhood, a buddy of mine who works at one of the finer liquor stores uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, he will remain nameless. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we've kind of built up a friendship and I have his uh, cell phone number and he has mine. And he can text me, uh, amazingly, you know, with technology today, he can send me a text and say, Tim, you know, we just got in some Colonel uh, E.H. Taylor. Are you interested? And, you know, there might be an exchange of, of uh, thoughts and ideas around that um, offer. And um, typically the answer will be, yes, I am interested. And, you know, I can basically have a bottle brought and delivered to my home. And um, further with the technology, I can shoot him a Venmo and pay for it, you know, in a, a second seamless step. And we're all set. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about a standard bourbon that's very easy to find out there here in America. This is uh, Old Forester. This is the oldest bourbon. Um, it's been available for the longest time in America. This was originally bottled and sold here in America over 150 years ago. So very easy to find. It's an 86 proof. Um, I'd say it leans a little more uh, on the rye heavy front. And this is a fine, fine, fine bourbon to have on hand in your personal bar. I think it lends well to mixing. So, you know, if we're talking about the spring, which we're, we're actually not today, we're talking about the fall, Tim. <laughs> uh, great, great, great vehicle for your uh, traditional mint julep. Now, I am a big fan of the old-fashioned cocktail as well as the Manhattan. And for either of those cocktails, you just need a couple jiggers of that bourbon. And then I will also typically add, and this is for either the Manhattan or the old-fashioned, uh, the Angostura, the Angostura Orange Bitters, of course, is a classic. And then Fee Brothers, they have a whole range of, uh, of bitters as well. And this is a grapefruit bitters, very interesting kind of taste profile. Adds a little bit of uh, floral and acidity and, and citrus um, to the overall taste profile of the cocktail. But anyway, for an old fashioned, you need a couple jiggers of bourbon. Um, you need one part sweet vermouth, which is easy to find. And I do a couple shakes of uh, bitters. Most people enjoy a Manhattan with a cherry. And the thing you want to avoid these days is your run-of-the-mill grocery store maraschino cherries. They, you know, they're, they're sickly sweet. They have a, a horrible candy-ish mouthfeel. Best to be avoided. There are two cherries right now, which are kind of the most popular cherries to be um, utilized with a Manhattan. And that would be the Bada Bing brand. Uh, very easy to find in supermarkets. Uh, my local Whole Foods carries these on the shelves. Um, they're under $10 a jar. Now, the premium cherry is the Luxardo brand. And those are quite a bit more expensive. They have a little more of a, a, a caramely uh, aged taste to them. Uh, the Bada Bing is much more kind of a fresh uh, tasting cherry. Uh, they're from Washington State, by the way. But the Luxardos, um, a little more expensive, about $20 a jar. But they are the ultimate premium cherry for a Manhattan cocktail. Now, an old-fashioned... Um, similar to the uh, Manhattan, but 
what you want to do is you start out with a couple jiggers of a, of a good mixing bourbon like Old Forester. Um, you want to add some kind of a sweetener element. That could be maybe a teaspoon of raw sugar, um, turbinado sugar. I don't use just run-of-the-mill brown sugar. I, I like a, a, a sugar in the raw. Now, you could mix that up or switch out maybe a little bit of uh, pure maple syrup, maybe a little bit of agave. You need a little sweetener element in that. And then typically, traditionally, um, you want to uh, have a cherry and then a nice wide uh, swath of an orange, uh, an orange peel. And um, you can just kind of uh, use that orange peel to release the oils. Uh, and then you can actually, I mean, the old school approach is to muddle that orange peel together with a cherry in that sugar, fill it up with your bourbon. Um, we need to talk about ice. We'll, we'll be talking about ice just momentarily. But fill that with ice. Uh, some people will do uh, just a little touch of uh, carbonated water, club soda. I skip that step. I don't bother with that. Mix it thoroughly and then a couple dashes of, of a favorite bitters uh, that you enjoy and you're all set to go with an old fashioned. Now let's talk about ice. The move today is to use uh, the large cubes um, with your cocktail. And this is a really nice um, oval mold. These can be found, I mean, they're selling these in supermarkets these days. Any nice liquor store, Will have these molds. They come in rectangle. I actually like the round, but very, very nice. Um, if you're just having a little bit of bourbon on the rocks, we're going to talk about a couple other bottles um, next. And um, I just enjoy that with one large cube and you're all set. Now, let's say you're having an old fashioned cocktail, which is my favorite fall cocktail. We need to put on a little music here, right? I mean, the vinyl community folks, my regular viewers are wondering, where's the music here today, Tim? Anyway, I think this is a fantastic choice that will accompany uh, a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned here in the month of October. This is the second ZZ Top album, and um, there just happens to be a fantastic song called Whiskey and Mama on side two. Funky, fantastic blues, featuring, of course, the legendary Billy Gibbons on lead guitar, the dearly departed Dusty Hill on bass, and then Frank Beard drums. There is a fantastic back image uh, of the band. This was, of course, originally released on the London uh, label. I have an early first pressing with that gorgeous electric blue London label. And these are easy to find. You can find these records in used bins today. Um, you should expect to pay between $15 and $30 depending on condition. Regular viewers know uh, that I am a stickler for condition. Nothing gets added to my collection um, unless it's a minimum of VG+. Plus. And um, those are easy to find out there. Fantastic music with, uh, with an old-fashioned. Second up is, you know, a, an album that kind of calls for a little more of a nuanced bourbon Something that you're probably not going to use as a mixer with a, a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned. You certainly can. It's going to elevate that drink for you, of course. But maybe enjoy it just with a little bit of ice. Or maybe it's a especially cold evening. You're in front of the fireplace. And uh, there's nothing wrong with just having a little bourbon neat uh, in a nice glass. This is... The 1969 Fleetwood Mac album. It was the last album featuring Peter Green. And uh, the album, of course, is called Then Play On. This is uh, 
a repressing from 1970. So kind of a second press. And this record is just an amazing piece of work. Anyone who knows, if you know Peter Green, you know. This was, of course, on the Reprise label. And let's take a look at some of the songs on this. Now, the big song that everybody knows is uh, the fifth track on side one, which is Oh Well, the Peter Green composition. But there are some fantastic songs. Now, Danny Kerwin, it was his first appearance on a Fleetwood Mac album. Um, he actually did some writing as well. Coming Your Way is a Danny Kerwin song. Closing My Eyes, a great Peter Green track. Um, I am quite fond of Showbiz Blues, uh, track three. Just incredible guitar, some slide guitar as well. Peter Green, uh, also kind of dearly departed over the last two or three years he died. What a, what a legend. And uh, if you only know the Buckingham Knicks period of Fleetwood Mac, you're, you're really kind of limiting yourself and you need to reach out check out those those early British blues based Fleetwood Mac albums. Now we need some bourbon of course. Uh, I got carried away started talking about the music um, something nice and nuanced would be a limited edition Maker's Mark Maker's Mark of course they're known for this red wax top um, but they come out every year with limited edition taste profiles. This is a, a 2021 bottle. Um, let's see the tasting notes. A fruit forward expression with notes of tobacco and wood. Fantastic. Um, quite a bit stronger uh, than that um, Old Forester. This is a 110 proof bottle. But look for, uh, you know, try one of these limited release bourbons. It doesn't have to be Maker's Mark. Almost all of the major brands these days are coming out with limited edition uh, releases with different taste profiles. But a little sip of this with, uh, with that Fleetwood Mac Then Play On album is, is a match made in heaven. There is cliche number one, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now last but certainly not least... If I'm going to reach for one of my favorite Steely Dan records, which is Pretzel Logic from 1974, I absolutely love the blues drenched title track. And, you know, that's the famous song that features Michael McDonald coming in on vocal uh, together with Fagan. Incredible guitar playing. Um, it's, it's, a tour de force keeping track at home uh, that's my second um, <laughs> uh, anyway I have a fantastic gatefold first pressing um, on the the black ABC label this is what you want if you want an original pressing of pretzel logic do not purchase something that has a MCA label, one of the later reissues. You want an ABC original first pressing with that rainbow block around the black ABC logo. Pretzel Logic is a fantastic Steely Dan album. And it requires something special. So what I have here is... W.L. Weller Special Reserve, known for the green, uh, kind of the dark forest green label. W.L. Weller, uh, they make several different varieties. Uh, they have a um, they have an antique, which has got a blue label, I believe. No, antique has a red label, um, and there are several others as well. These are beginning to get difficult to find in liquor stores. Um, they have a, a 755th bottle. I actually have the, um, what is this? Is this a one and a half liter bottle? This is the 1.75 liter uh, 
special reserve. This is the easiest WL Weller bottle to find out in the wild uh, today. I actually think WL Weller is becoming an allocated bourbon, so um, they are limiting how many bottles and at what time of the year they're being released to different liquor stores based on how much you know liquor is being sold per capita, et cetera, demographics of the store, et cetera. But this is a really nice weeded bourbon, has a softer mouthfeel to it, incredible caramel flavor. My favorite uh, bourbon out there is definitely W.L. Weller. Highly recommended if you can find some. Now, this is also known as the poor man's uh, pappy. So, uh, Weller is part of the Buffalo Trace kind of conglomerate group of bourbons. And in that group is Pappy Van Winkle. Pappy Van Winkle, the very, very, very allocated incredibly rare, difficult to find. There are stories of, uh, you know, someone popping into a store and they just happen to have some Pappy on the shelf. That is a rare, rare, rare occurrence. But if you cannot find Pappy, a lot of people will swear by the W.L. Weller in any, uh, in any of their lines. Uh, the Special Reserve is fantastic. This bottle used to retail for about $28. Um, I recently paid 46 for, well, not, not that recently, <laughs> uh, 46 for to 1.75. Um, you should be paying no more than $27, $28 these days for your standard 750 mil fifth uh, bottle of, uh, of Weller. Hey, that was a little bit of a different video today. I wanted to expound on my favorite season of the year. We're coming into autumn now. Um, it's time to you know turn on that fireplace, depending on where you are in the United States or abroad. And, and hopefully you can try some fine uh, bourbons. Remember, bourbon uh, typically has been aged for a minimum of two years uh, in, in white American oak charred barrels. The charred barrels are actually the, the uh, vehicle for providing that caramelized brown color in the vanilla notes and cinnamon, uh, sometimes cinnamon, uh, but that corn caramelizes uh, and ages as well over two years. Fantastic flavor profile bourbon, one of my favorite spirits and it goes incredibly well with the blues in all of its different formats. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim with the University of Vinyl. I would be overjoyed if you wanted to check out some of my other videos. Uh, I am a serious record collector and recently confessed audiophile. Take care. We'll see you soon.